Hello, and welcome back to Learn JavaScript with Creative Coding. I am Dr. Abstract, and let's go to the Zim site now at zimjazz.com. We'll scroll down to the bottom and press on School. We've done a few videos for each of these lessons. We're on our very last lesson. Whoa, there it is, last lesson, where we've done, oh, I don't know, six or seven uh, videos, six, I think. So on things like parallax and going from page to page, all sorts of exciting things there, sprites. So in this video, we're going to take a look at animating to sound. Woohoo! Yay, so let's go grab a template. Go back to the main page, hit code, and pop on down to the minimal template where we'll copy the minimal template. We'll drop this down, pop into Adam here, or text editor, any text editor that has color syntaxing, hopefully. And we'll change this to lesson 08-7. We're bringing in CreateJS, we're bringing in Zim, and we will also want to bring in some sound. So to do that, we load it in just like any other assets. We can say const assets equals. If we only have one asset, we don't have to put the array, but usually I do anyway, just for consistency's sake. And this one is called hierarchies.mp3. There we go. And it's in the assets folder, so const path is equal to, quote, assets. So that's a relative path, but we put the slash. That will then put this thing on the end of that thing. And we pass that in here. Uh, let's see, comma. Um, assets, comma, path, like that. There we go. So we're bringing in uh, that now, and we can play it if we want here. Asset, round bracket, higher. Well, let's copy it. <laughs> it's hard enough to spell in the first place. If I don't spell it so often, <laughs> you know, I wouldn't have been that good at it. So hierarchies.mp3, and we can dot play. Now, uh, in the past, we used to have to go frame.asset here. <clears throat> but in Zim 10.6.1, the latest version of Zim at the moment, we have uh, made that so that we can just use a global assets function. And that then points to the frame.asset, uh, global asset function. Okay, so we play that. Now, if we're going to pass that into the sound wave later, we're going to use a sound wave class. If we're going to pass it into the sound wave later, we're going to need a reference to it. We could have played the sound right as we were passing it in, but we'll do this in two steps. We'll say const sound is equal to that. Now, uh, you need to play it to assign it to a value like that. So once you play it, it creates this thing called a create.js sound instance. And then you can control later on, afterwards, you can control things like panning and volume and have a reference to that sound that is playing. All right, now you can also set, initially you can set the volume and the panning right in here and the looping. But if you want to access it later, then store it in a variable or a constant. All right, let's have a listen, shall we? We open up in browser. Yes, okay. okay. Put that on pause there if we want. I'll just close her down for now. Okay, so as mentioned, we want to put this into a sound wave object. And then what we'll do is when that sound wave object is all ready, we will create a bunch of circles and we'll have the circle sizes change based on the frequency of the sound. Now you could also put a bunch of bars. We just, we just did a bunch of bars. We just did a bunch of rectangles to show us noise. So rather than do another set of rectangles, I thought we would do uh, set of circles. I like the looks of that better anyway. All right, so you can animate anything to these sound frequencies, though. It's just a bunch of data. As a matter of fact, I went and taught in China. I taught animators in China how to animate mouths, like lip syncing, using frequency data so that they could 
you know, they didn't have to do the animation themselves. It would just sort of move the mouth to the frequencies. Okay, well, we're now back here in Canada, no longer in China. <laughs> I'm not sure where you are. You could be there. You could be in China. Uh, ni hao. <laughs> All right, so what are, oh yeah, the, the sound wave. So let's make a sound wave. Const sound wave is equal to a new sound wave. How cool is that, huh? And we say how many of these frequencies we want. I don't know if you know sound is divided up in, well, it's not exactly divided up into frequencies, but as a sound plays, it, it um, has different frequencies and or aspects of different frequencies. And we can capture how big those are, how much bass there is, how much middle, how much treble, that type of thing. Uh, you've probably seen or imagined that before. <laughs> Didn't you go through engineering like me? Well, anyway, maybe even high school science. <laughs> there you go. Or just played one of those, uh, I don't know, you, you've probably seen animations to sound before, you know, where the, the bars go up and down or little waveforms go up and down. That's what we're talking about here with sound wave. All right, so we say how many of these? And let's do 50. And we also say what sound are we accessing? And in this case, it's the sound. We can also access the microphone as well. So you can check out, there's examples on how to animate to uh, a microphone. And we do that when we, when we go out and do light shows. We capture the sound from the room and then we play or we, we animate based on those frequencies. So we've done a number of those. You can look up Dan Zen dancing, for instance, Dan Zen dancing on YouTube. And you could probably find some dancing. Oh, we've even seen them right in the closing videos. You know, we've seen some closing videos. The closing video of this video will have me dancing in a bunch of uh, in a bunch of circles. So here we are recreating that. All right. So we make make a sound wave. Now that takes a little bit of time to kind of kick in there. So we have a ready event, and that would look like sound wave dot on ready. Oh. <laughs> Excuse me. Too bad we didn't have that one. Oh, <laughs> three. Uh oh. So all that was really two, wasn't it? One's a wish, two's a kiss. So I'm getting a kiss, and then I added another one after. So I'm going to kiss, kiss, and a wish. <laughs> That's how you handle it. One's a wish, two's a kiss, three's a disappointment. So that was not three sneezes. That was two sneezes followed by a pause, and then one sneeze. So that's a wish and a kiss. All right, sound wave dot on ready. And then in here, we call an arrow function. Um, we can collect. Uh, do we need to collect anything? Well, we could probably just access it right on the sound wave. We're going to calculate um, something. We're going to calculate on the sound wave, but we don't need to collect anything in here. And down below, we'll make our circles. Uh, this is. Now this isn't happening constantly. This happens once, once it's ready. So when we're ready, we'll make our circles. Why don't we start on black too? Hmm, black. Just a nicer backdrop, especially if you're projecting, you don't want a you know, big white box around something or a big light box. So here we are, we'll make our circles. Const circles is equal to a new container. And uh, if we make that container, well, well we can just um, center it anyway, or we can just add to the circle. Yeah, let's see, the container is being added. We'll, we'll add and then we'll center it after and that should be fine. Okay, so there we go. Uh, con circles is equal to a new container. And then we're, we need to make as many circles as there are sound waves. So that's right there, that's the number although we might want sound wave dot num. So this would be loop sound wave. That's the reference to our sound wave object. Dot num gives us how much we put there. So if we change this to 40, that would be 40 and we wouldn't have to go and change this in two places. All right, so we're looping through sound wave dot num. Each time we're given what number we're on, I, and we'll pass this into an arrow function like so. 
Okay. We are going to then uh, make a circle for each one. So let circle equal a new circle, like so, and give it a dimension. The dimension here doesn't matter too much because we're going to set the radius later on. So that doesn't matter. And then we want a random color here. So we can go green, pink, blue. What are the colors do we have? Orange, yellow. OK, that will do. So we could pick this randomly using sort of more raw JavaScript. We would set that as an array uh, initially outside. And then we would say, hey, give me uh, the array at a random number between 0 and the length minus 1. And we would math.floor that so that it would become a whole number. And that would give us a random color. Or we could shuffle that array using Zim Shuffle, shuffle the array and get the zero element. Or in this case, anytime you pass in a, an array to a Zim Circle there, or here as well, um, it's called a Zim V value or a Zim Pick value. And it will, it will just by default pick a random one from those. As opposed, you could also pass in a range. So this is ZimV or ZimPick. We've seen this before. It's something special in Zim that allows dynamic parameters. It's called ZimV because it was introduced in version five of Zim. Five, as in a V. <laughs> cool. Huh? All right. As opposed to the Zim Duo technique, which was introduced in Zim two, that allows us to pass in parameters regularly or as a single configuration object. There's also the Zim fourth methods. <laughs> okay, <laughs> on and on. Sometimes uh, we name the the things after the version of Zim they were introduced to. All right, so we've got this circle, great. But did we add it anywhere? No. So let's dot add to the circles, like so. Now, when we add it to the circles, we've got this container there. It's just going to be. Uh, um, zero, zero until we add our first circle, but the circle has its registration point in the middle, which means we're going to end up with a container that's like a circle with its registration point in the middle too, and then some of the circle will be on the left-hand side of it and some of the right. Anyway, won't matter too much uh, in this case, and then we are going to circles dot center. I think we probably could have, uh, it, it used to be that we'd have to put something in it before we could center it, but I bet you we can, I think we updated Zim so we can center it right there and it will just take that and put it in the center. Let's try that and see if we still get circles in the center. Uh, let's have a look. Now we haven't hooked this up yet. We'll open in browser but we should see something. No, we don't. I don't see any circles there. Ah right this happens later. So this happens later we would need a stage.update in here. There we are. And we refresh here. There we go. So indeed, that circle got centered. There's, I can tell the the edges are a little bit crumbly looking. That's what happens if you add up. That's that's 50 circles right on top of one another. There, we could um, demonstrate that by adding to circles dot move. Uh, how about i times 10? And now we would see a bunch of random colors moved over i times 10. Let me drop this down so we can see these. Bump, like so. And we refresh here. <laughs> Isn't that neat? It's almost an optic illusion. I'm sure those are the same size, but it looks like they're getting bigger and getting smaller. So these are 50 of them. I bet you could count them. 50 random circles moved over a little bit. And if we refresh, we're getting a sort of a different look each time. OK, so they're all there. Great. Um, and indeed, our centering of the container, even though there was no, no dimensions there, usually uh, you could be a bit more careful there and say stage width. If you don't want to run into problems, stage height will center. Well, we can just add two at that point, because that would be the same as centering it. And then when we add to circles, we wouldn't leave the add to circles because that would look like this. 
Now, when we add to circles, we're adding at 0, 0, because that's what add to does. Instead, we would center the circles inside that container, and we'd be back to, to normal. So just be careful, especially if you're just starting with Zim, sometimes creating a container that has nothing in it, and then you're trying to position things in it later can be a confusing thing, unless you really know what you're doing. Okay. So here we've given it a dimension, add two. We know that this container is as big as the stage. And then we're going to put the circles in there, but we're going to center the circles inside of circles. We don't need to move them. Oop, get rid of that. Okay, so uh, we don't need that. And now we're going to do the magic where we make, basically we are going to make the radius of the circles equal to the frequency of the sound uh, as we move along in I. So there we've made all the circles. Great. Now we only do that when the sound wave is ready. Um, and now what we're going to do is use a ticker in here. So we don't need a stage.update anymore. The ticker will handle that. So the ticker is a control. So it's a sound wave. Ticker.add. We're going to add an arrow function here. And in here, we're going to constantly change the radius of those uh, sound wave, or of the circles based on the sound wave data. So that looks like this. Var, or we'll do a let, let data is equal to sound wave. We ask for a calculation from the sound wave. Sound wave dot calculate. And what that does is it just, um, it just says, okay, update the sound wave at this moment and give me a new calculation from that. And what data will be is an array of 50 things that has the frequency values uh, at across the board from bass to middle to treble. So it's going to be a long array with, with values. And those values you can sort of set in the sound wave the types of range you want with those values. In general, we've got a, a decent range. I, you know, it's going to go from zero to a couple hundred or something like that. But you can magnify that at any time by just multiplying it or dividing it. Uh, and you can also do various other tweakings of the sound wave. Sometimes the bass looks too high, and we've We've compensated for that by default, but you can even tweak more if you need to. But for now, why don't we keep it uh, straightforward? So that gets us our array of data. Do you want to see it? Data. Uh, it it's going to go by really, really quickly, but we'll zog the data here just so you get an idea. And we refresh. Uh, we have to turn that on, and then we will F12. Uh, Okay, now I'm going to turn the sound off. And when we turn the sound off, the data also ends. So, well, it's still doing the data, but you see how it's a bunch of zeros now? Because we're not getting any sound in. So here's the, the sound waves uh, coming in. There's the data for it. 60, 0, 45, 356. So that's what the sound wave data looks like. And there'd be a bunch of them in there. Okay, so let's close that down. Sometimes um, logging to the console like that will definitely bog or slow down. We're in a ticker. This happens very quickly, and we're trying to log all these arrays just from just from logging a whole bunch of text, basically. It uh, slows things down, so you can expect that. So we won't zog there. Instead, we will make our the size of our circles match that. So we loop through circles, circles dot loop, like that. And each time we're going to be given the circle. And I, oh, hang on. Circle and I. And we pass that into an arrow function like so. So we collect it. We're collecting the circle. That's what Zim loop will give us. And we also collect the index number i. And uh, that's where we, we're doing our calculation here. And now we're looping through what we've calculated, or not quite yet, we're looping through our circles. But now we say circle.radius, that's the property we want to set, is equal to the data at i. So the data came from the sound wave at each loop. 
or sorry, not each loop, each ticker. And then we're looping through the circles and applying that data that we saw to the radius of the circle, like so. And here's what we get. Are you ready? <coughs> we refresh here. No, oh, turn on the sound. Okay, let's, uh, let's um, move that, or make that a little bit smaller so that we can see more of the circle, I think, times um, 0.7, maybe. Let's try her again. Okay, not too bad. Maybe 0.5. We'll bring it right down. And uh, one more time, we'll have a look and then can try one more thing here. Open browser. Isn't that beautiful? Very nice. Now, there's actually a lot of circles in there. One thing we can do is we can have the circles uh, um, set the composite operation on it or the blend mode. So here is circles being created, dot add to. We can also set the blend mode there, dot bleh, <laughs> to something like uh, the difference. <clears throat> Difference like that, and now, as as we show those circles, there they will sort of take the difference of colors right across, and and I think you'll see something quite quite startling. Are you ready to be startled? Yeah. Let's startle. Uh, open in browser. Whoa. So there's actually a lot more circles in there than we're seeing because we're just taking the highest circles. So if we're going to do that, then perhaps we don't need 50 of them. Maybe we just need 10. This would divide the range of frequencies up into 10 averages. And so we check it here. Open in browser. <laughs> it's nice too, isn't it? And that's just with 10 of them. My goodness, that's hypnotic. <laughs> We're, uh, we're finishing a little early today. <laughs> we're finishing a little early. Let's just watch this for a while. <laughs> yeah, <geez. laughs> well, though I think I'd, I'd want to. Isn't that nice? And there's a variety of things that you can do to play with that, to, to make art from sound, uh, and even use it, like I said, in practical situations. So, uh, this has been a Learn JavaScript with creative coding. And now let's see what this looks like in the wild. If we were to project this onto, oh, you know, a far wall, and then we can stand in it. <laughs> Isn't that neat? And that's using our our voice or using the microphone input, microphone input to get that to happen. Super duper. So if you uh, enjoy this kind of stuff, come on in to zimjs.com slash slack and you can talk about it. Tell us what you made, find out more about what we're making. 
There's all sorts of uh, little tips and tricks going on in there and examples to see. And please tell your friends as well. It's sometimes nice to have somebody to code with. I don't know if I do. I've been doing this all my life and uh, a little bit solitary. I'd love to have a coding friend. So if you want to be that coding friend, come on in. Talk to us on Slack and maybe, hey, maybe we can uh, be friends for life, huh? Could happen. <laughs> we'll see you there. Ciao.